Welcome to the first video version of our podcast here on World According to Briggs. The podcast is actually called Stories from America. We've been doing it off and on for about a year. We've only got like 10 episodes. And it's basically stories about people I've met over the years through my travel, things like that. Since we're doing our first video version of it, we thought it would be appropriate to have a guest. So that's how we're going to do this from now on. Our first guest, a lot of you probably already know, He's been doing YouTube about as long as I have, maybe a little bit longer, and he does very similar content. At least he used to. He's kind of gone into travels these days, and he's been traveling all across the United States for the better part of two years. He's been described as the right-leaning version of Briggs, or I've been, <laughs> I've been described as the left-leaning version of Nick Johnson. That's right. Our first guest on this podcast is Nick Johnson. Let's take a look. All right. All right, Nick Johnson, how are you doing, buddy? Jimmy, I'm doing good. How are you doing out there on the West Coast? The West Coast, you know, Oregon is Oregon. Um, you know, living in living the American dream in the Pacific Northwest with all the rain. We're raining right now. Yeah. So well, yeah, us, us East you know. Coasters don't have all that stuff out here. We're and we don't have nearly as many bums as as you guys have out there. <laughs> now you were out here, and it wasn't well. No, actually, you came out at the peak. And you walked around Portland. You saw how bad it was, right? Yeah, you and I walked around a little bit. And then I took off at night and wandered through Portland downtown. Um, and it was really eerie because you could walk around for blocks. And it was just this quiet. It was almost like I was camping in the mountains with t all the tents. Yeah. Very quiet. But I hear, is it not as bad as it was back then? So it, it's gotten a lot better. Um, they've they've kind of passed some rules about getting people off the streets. Now, it's not perfect. Basically, they're at the phase of whack-a-mole right now. They break up this camp. They go set up someplace else. Well, it's become more of a hassle for a lot of them. So they've gotten off the sidewalks and more into the woods around. And some of them have left town. It's definitely less than you saw when you were up here in, 20, what was that, 2021? Um, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, about that, yeah, and that. Um, so it's it's better since then. We still got a long way to go, but it is getting better. Um, when you're up here, which I always bring up to people, that during the riots that we had, um, it wasn't as bad as the news said it. And being you were talking to that bartender when you were up here, and he kind of told you that same thing too, because we we're at a bar four blocks away from where all that crap was going on, and he said he could hear it but didn't see anything. Am I right or am I right? Isn't that what he told you? Yeah, it, it wasn't even that bad. I mean, I, I really do like Portland a lot um, more than I let on when I like to make fun of the, of the city. And I like yeah. Seattle a lot, too. I, I yeah. do not like San Francisco or Los Angeles at all. Mm -hmm. But I like it up there in your neck of the woods. I just it's just, you know, it's just easy to um, find things to make fun of and, and poke, <laughs> poke at. And oh, um, yeah, absolutely. But we all want our good cities to get well again and some of them have potential and a lot of them um have potential but they'll never get there because of the politics of the place um yeah and too many hoops to go through um so you grew up in southern california like i did you a couple of miles uh east of me what yeah you, that san bernardino about an hour away yeah yeah, um, I, yeah. <clears throat> is that where you're born and raised or did you just end up there at some point no i was born there yeah and and the thing about southern california is that you probably know is you don't really have any incentive or motivation or desire to really leave Southern California. Yeah. Um, a lot of people that grow up in the Midwest or up in Northeast are like, oh my God, I got to get away. It's so boring or it's so cold. I got to move one day. We had really all the entertainment and the weather. The weather was great. There was no real reason to leave Southern California. So growing up, I really had no thought that I was ever going to leave. I never even really cared about it at all. Yeah. Um, and it wasn't until my wife got stuck in the Southern California area um, for a job. And we met and she was like, this sucks. And I was like, yeah, it kind of does. And she's like, maybe we should leave. Do you want to get out of here? So she only lasted five years. And she was like, let's go, let's go out to the Midwest. Where we should, Where's she, she from gone. originally? Illinois. Oh, Illinois. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. um, when we were growing up and even up to the point I left it, that's kind of the attitude. Why do you leave up until a few years ago? California is where everyone went to. I mean, not just the people that want to stay there, but the entire country always wanted to go to California or Florida or New York. Um, and then something changed and nobody wanted to move there anymore. And a lot of us wanted to leave, uh, both of us, you know, we both failed. Um, and it's weird. It's weird because that's how I grew up too. You don't leave California. Everything's here. Why would you go? 
Um, now it's like you, you got to pay to stay and it's not worth it. It's not worth what you're paying for it. No, it I can't even imagine trying to, I feel bad for the, these 20 to 35 year olds that are graduating college that are like, okay, I want to start a life. I want to start a family. They're not going to be able to afford a house in California, much less in a lot of places in the country. Yeah. Um, you know, there are some very affordable places to live. If they want to leave California, that's great. And I get a lot of people that email me and they probably email you too. Um, where, sh where should I go? I hate it in California. Get that all um, the time. It, yeah. And I'm like, well, it depends on the politics and, and, and what you want to do for fun. Um, but there's a lot of great options um, outside of California and people are starting to realize or have started to realize like I do not need to sit in traffic all day and deal with all the homelessness and all the, all the crime and the smashing crabs and the cost of living and the cuckoo stuff that's going on out here. So um, yeah, I think they're losing population in terms of the number of people that were coming in that has gone down. There's more people leaving than coming in. Even the emig emig uh, the immigration's down. Slow down. I, I heard that a lot of the Hispanics that are coming up to California spend about a year and then they're like, this is really not any better than where we left. It's more expensive and there's crime and it's tents everywhere. Yeah. And they're leaving, they're going back home. It used to be worth their risk. Now they're all okay. The it's not Matt, you know, the, the risk ain't worth it. What's that? Uh, the squeeze ain't worth the juice. Is that nope. what the old saying is? Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, that, that's a big problem. This is like the first last two years, the first time in California's history, they've had back to back years where they dropped a, Oh, you know, a little bit. Mm -hmm. They it's less than a percent each year, but considering since the 1850s, they've done nothing but grow. You know, that's that's a big deal. So yeah, yeah. everyone's it's going weird. to Texas, uh, Florida. They're coming to the Carolinas, where I am. Carolinas, Colorado, big. Nevada. Uh, every it, 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 you can see this pattern that are coming from the northeast down to the uh, Carolinas, down to Florida, Georgia. Or they're going from California and they're spreading out to from Texas all the way up to like Idaho and kind of just trying to stay within two or three states of home. Yeah. Um, Nevada's Las Vegas and uh, Phoenix just got wrecked by all the oh, people I know. That they're, there. They're over. It's kind of like what I um, like Dallas and all that has a lot to offer, but I think they've peaked and I think they're going downhill because they got too crowded. It's getting too expensive still way better than just about any place in California, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's overdone. It's played out already, I think. And yeah. I think a lot of places like North Carolina has got their day coming, you know? Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, we, we're getting more crowded. Uh, we have a lot more room and I think the people here, they're just chill, you know? I mean, even when you go out to Phoenix and, and, and Colorado and, um, you know, we did a whole mountain West trip when we went all the way over from Utah, all the way up to Idaho some of the people that move there still seem to kind of have that West coast mentality and they like change things a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, although less now, because it used to be when you talk to locals in Montana and Idaho, they're saying like the people that used to come up from California used to say, um, this is, why are you doing it like that? We're going to change it and make it like we do it in California. We know what we're talking about. And now the people that are going up there are like, Hey, I don't want to change anything. Just leave it <laughs> like this. Yeah. I left and so there's a, a common um, stereotype um, misunderstanding that Californians want to change everything. And it's no. usually the ones that are leaving are the ones that don't want that stuff. Ex that they're leaving. Exactly. It's like, I forget what it was. It's not, a, everyone's under the impression that everyone in California or everyone in Oregon are just liberals, hardcore liberals. No, it's like only the people in Portland, maybe Salem and Bend are liberals in Oregon. The rest of the state is conservative Republican and people just don't get that. It's the whole state is not liberals. And California mm -hmm. is the same way. The coastal areas are pretty much liberal. Everything back from there, it's pretty much conservative Republican. And mm -hmm. they're the people, for the most part, that are getting out of the state. Mm -hmm. The people from Los Angeles seem to be moving up here to Oregon, though. I've noticed that. That seems <laughs> It seems to me that if you're from the San Joaquin Valley or out there near Palm Desert or San Bernardino, you're heading east where yeah. all the people from Los Angeles and San Francisco are heading north. So it's mm -hmm. weird. So where you're living now, you're in North Carolina, right? Yeah. We live down by the coast. Okay. Um, and you, that's definitely, you think that's a better fit than you ever had in California? 
Yeah, I you know I when I left I had no idea where the hell I wanted to be. I was tw- in my late twenties. I was just trying to just find a job and find a way to make it happen. And I lived in the Midwest for five years, and then that was too cold and gray. And I was like, let's get the hell out of here. I had a buddy who had moved down to North Carolina, and he's like, come down here, man, it's great. And I had no idea anything about it. I hadn't even thought. I just wanted to leave Indiana is all I knew. And we came down here, um, and it has. It, you know, all the things that California has, um, the mountains, the, the best beach in the country, the Carolinas. Uh, one oh, yeah. Long the Outer Banks, stretch. beautiful. Yeah. And it's like that down the entire state, just quiet, peaceful, white, sandy beaches, warm water. Um, feels like you're in the Caribbean. A lot of people don't really know how good our beaches are, which is fine with me. Um, yeah. But yeah, we don't have the the cost of living problems, the politics problems, the crime problems, all this, the traffic, all, just everything that's wrong with California. We don't have that, but we have all the good things that are in California, like the, the weather and the beaches and the mountains and all that stuff. So I think it's a wonderful place. Um, it's becoming very, uh, you know, they call them halfbacks. A lot of people they yeah. don't want to go all the way to Florida or come in here. Um, come right back. Yeah. Halfway back to New York is what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Um yeah, that's that's we we don't get much of that here on the West Coast now. Once they leave, they go all the way up to Seattle or Oregon and they just stay there. Nobody comes halfway back to San Francisco because <laughs> made your situation worse. Now, were you doing YouTube already when you moved back to the Midwest and to North Carolina? Um, not really. No. When I got here, I'd started a couple of websites. One uh, one was called Home Snacks, and we were trying to use Facebook to back in the day in 2015 2016 you could put an ad up on facebook and you could um seed it into a little small demographic and you could get traffic to your website and stuff would go viral Mm -hmm. so we started creating content 10 worst places to live in texas 10 most redneck cities in tennessee and that stuff would go viral um daily and so i was like well maybe i should make some videos kind of just take the content make a video out of it Um, and that's kind of how I got started on the YouTube was just creating content for, um, the Facebook ads Mm -hmm. and putting it on YouTube. And that was in 2016. (laughs) And then I looked back, um, a couple years later, it was around 2017, 2018. I looked at the YouTube channel and had like 37,000 subscribers. And I was like, Oh shit. Like (laughs) this thing's been working. I should probably do something with that. So that's when I started creating content for YouTube specifically, but I'd been making videos since we were in college. Um, I was the guy with the video camera that would walk around campus and tell people to read off lines and we'd have mm-hmm. our own little skit show and we'd have um, um, like movie um, movie nights where we would show like our movies that we had made and mm-hmm. get around TV show <laughs> and stuff back before YouTube was even a thing. I'm, go- I'm yeah. going back to like the year 2000. Um, so that's really kind of how I got started was just picking up the camera and trying to tell stories around my college campus and interviewing people and um then my fraternity brothers thought they were getting involved and that turned into a, what we thought was funny when I was 20 years old. It's always funny when you're 20. Everything's funny when you're 20. Yep. The grosser, the better too. You should, I used to be a stand-up comedian. You should see my act back from when I was like 26 and 27. I look back at that now and I'm like, Oh, what was I thinking? What was I thinking? That was disgusting. (laughs) It's like, why did I say that? Do you have footage of that? Huh? Do you have footage of that that you could we could all watch? You know, I think I got some old stuff because we were really filming back then that much. Yeah. Um, I have some old stuff here at the house, but I have one video. If you go back early, uh, there's like one or two videos of me doing uh, comedy. But yeah, um, oh okay, I need to go dig, dig back. I I used to have a bunch of old stuff on my channel um, from old well, I'm t- college days stuff I uploaded a long, long time ago that was still mm-hmm. on there that hardly anybody even knew. It was buried down in the Nick Johnson archives. And then somebody emailed me and he's like, hey, dude, one of those old videos from you in college, you should probably watch it. You guys said some pretty offensive stuff. And I had no idea. I went back and watched it. and I was like, oh, my God, you can't yeah. say that anymore on television. So I deleted like or hid all of my old shit because I was like, I don't remember what I what we were doing back then. I don't I can't get canceled. Yeah, for that. Yeah, it's like my stand-up act. That's another reason. I was not a very clean comic, and I was kind of an insult comic. And most of my act was about being married to a Hispanic girl, a white guy and Hispanic wife. And that just, that won't fly these days, you know? And um, it's like, 
<laughs> it's like I make fun of her accent. She doesn't really have an accent. This is funny though. People would see my act and then they'd meet my wife and they'd start talking to her slower. Like she, she can't even speak Spanish <laughs> in reality, but everyone thinks she can't even speak English. So yeah, I can't, I don't eat. I'm never going to put up half my stuff. It would just get me canceled. I know you got to watch that's yeah. Today's world. You know, you can't say anything. You can't because somebody will get offended and they'll complain and you'll lose your job or you'll lose your friends or family no, members. Man. And I mean, it, it's just crazy how, stuff gets taken out of context now yeah yeah my it's too bad but yeah, yeah the getting canceled is pretty pretty serious these days when you came up here to portland you did this whole thing where you traveled around pretty much the whole country looking at places where the homeless were that's an that's a pretty serious almost you know it's almost like uh a, a, it's it's above what me and you kind of got known for you know it, it's a serious documentary for youtube i thought and it it uh it got a lot of views and it was pretty serious. How you know how are you gonna top that? How am I gonna top homeless stuff? The homeless series you did back a couple of years ago. I mean, I still I, everybody, you know, likes to see the reality of what's happening in the country, even though they won't admit that they like to gawk at the bad side of uh, you know of life. Um, everybody likes to watch it. You know as well as I do when you put up a video that says the 10 best places to live. And then you put a video of the 10 worst places to live. One of them's going to get 10 times as many views. Exactly. Um, and you know, so I took advantage of that, you know, people's in, infatuation with homelessness and crime and poverty. Um, I grew up in a bad area. It wasn't bad when I was growing up, but I am familiar with, you know, I, I'm from the hood basically. Yeah. I mean that, the, the middle class hood uh, the, uh, of the hood. But, you know, I, oh, grow with up. You. I grew up on the streets of great. <laughs> I grew up on the streets of a gated community. I'm all <laughs> I yeah. always tell people that they're all I'm from the streets. Yeah, me too. <laughs> of a gated community. Community. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I so but I was surrounded by, you know, pretty bad stuff. And I used to hang out in the bad areas as a kid and I know my way around. So I would just go into these places and just start filming and talking to people. And it kind of became you know, people started to, you know, grab onto it and say that they like to see it and, you know, we'll go in there at night. Um, I think that one thing that I could maybe do would be probably, um, I, I, so the whole night thing. So everybody wants me to go into the, the ghettos at night. Um, number one, you can't see. And number two, I'll probably get shot. Yeah. But, um, I think I would like to be able to go in and get a better perspective from, the population that really is struggling and talk with them more. So I haven't really done any of that. Um, mm -hmm. I'm going to learn how to fly a drone so I can maybe use that as a tool at some point. Um, and basically just maybe more kind of documentary style, just straight up follow people around for a couple days rather than, I mean, I, I'm when I go to a city, I'm there for a couple days and I spend time talking to people, but to capture a city in two days is, doesn't really do it justice. Yeah, um, yeah. So topics that maybe I could spend more time on and um, that are outside of the normal public view. I think yeah. maybe may, where I'm going, but I still have a year left to travel. We're going to, we just got back from Texas. That uh, series is going to start airing right after the new year. Um, then we're going to go up to, uh, you can tell I'm growing my stash out here a little bit. I'm going to Wisconsin <laughs> yeah. in February because we're going to show people what it's like in winter wonderland. Cause I get a lot of people that say like, Oh my God, why don't you ever show snowy and, and hard life? You always show like sunny or, you know, summertime stuff, mm -hmm. do a winter road trip. So we're going to go up into the great North and talk to some people up there in Michigan and, and Wisconsin for a, a month and uh, hopefully get dumped on. Uh, yeah. With snow. That'd be good. You'll go up there. There'll be no snow. Like that I would say, suck. Yeah, no, I, I, I want I, it to be as bad as it can be. I want to get stuck. I want the local dude to come down and pull us out. <laughs> live the live that Wisconsin dream. It's like me. I went to San uh, Antonio. I was going to film the whole river walk as a nice place to go visit. I show up there the week they decided to drain it and clean it out. Oh, I was like there for two days and it was dry as a bone. And it looked well, disgusting. Good footage, though. That would have been I, that would have been good footage. I got some, and it was just mostly, I don't know, me being depressed about my <laughs> about how I didn't. You know, it's like who thinks they're gonna drain a river? I mean, and and of all the weeks, they do this every couple of years, I guess. Of all the weeks I show up, I show up on that week. 
It's like, yeah, I know it's happened to me a lot too. I, I'll go somewhere. Um, like we were just in, when we went to Texas, we were supposed to spend a week on the coast and half the week was just cr crummy, gray, dreary. I'm like, you can't show the, the coast off like that. That's not, that's like not that. good footage right there. Not good footage. So you can't really know, but you should have done your homework. Jimmy, I'm telling you. you uh, yeah, have. really. You're, you ain't lying. So you were in Baltimore one time and you yeah. almost got carjacked, right? Yeah. I, you know, I don't know what the guy was trying to do. I think if you're going to show the footage, maybe I'll, I'll talk, tell you a little bit about what was going on. Uh, this is back when I was start, starting to first go into bad ghettos by myself. And I was driving through Baltimore one morning and I had to pull over because I was in the middle of buying a house. So I was negotiating. The realtor called me and you can kind of hear on the clip where I'm talking with the real estate agent, um, pulled over. And then the, um, a guy came up behind me and tried the passenger rear door and, and I turned and looked and he yelled something like, get out. And I don't know if he was saying get out of the car or get the fuck out of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I don't know if he was trying to shoot me take my car or uh, warn me like you need to leave. I don't know what get out meant. I, um, I think he wanted your car or he wouldn't have tucked, tried to pull on the door. I think he would have pounded on your window or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what he was trying to do, um, but I was like, I got to go hung up and drove. And that was, you know, you, you tend to let your guard down um, because I've been to the pretty much the worst places in the country and I've driven through all the worst neighborhoods and so when I take people into these neighborhoods, they'll be like, oh, my God, this is just absolutely terrible. And I'm thinking, this isn't even that bad. Where's the bad street? You know, like, this yeah, isn't that bad. <laughs> because my perspective is warped. So um, I get very comfortable when I'm driving into some of these neighborhoods. I'll pull over and I'll start messing with my phone or I'll start talking to somebody and I'll be filming them. And they're this far away and they could easily just grab my camera or hold it, hold me up. Um Part of it is my trusting nature. I also feel like I have a good instinct with people that I know I can sense when it's not time to be somewhere. But that was one of the times in Baltimore when I let my guard down and mm. um, should not have pulled over and um, stopped looking around. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. So I had a phone call I had to take and I pulled over on a street that wasn't horrible, but I clearly stood out. This man right here spotted me from a block away and in a sec you're going to hear him try to open the passenger door well you know and valerie will be here mm -hmm. so we'll, we can get it all done yeah so, all right but, yeah, that's great. Right? that was the one and only time i stopped anywhere in baltimore that wasn't at a red light you're right here all right and then so that wasn't your only incident. You were in, what was it, West Virginia or Kentucky, and you got kicked out of a hotel by what I could best describe as a hillbilly that ran a hotel. Uh, yeah, that was in McCreary County, Kentucky. And <laughs> we went to that hotel to kind of document how Eastern Kentucky has kind of fallen um, downhill. I mean, the, most of it's very, very poor. Not, some of the people are super nice if you get back in there and you talk to people, but um, those hollers are very poor. A lot of people don't really have good jobs. They're all on welfare and there's a lot of drug use. Um, and there were only two hotels in the entire county to, to book. And so we booked the better one, a place called the Fairview Inn, uh, Fairview Inn. And we get there and my wife is like, oh, hell no. And I'm like, okay, we have two, two days and then we're going to move on to the next whatever. So she's like, all right, well, let's, let's take off and come back and maybe have a couple drinks and it won't seem so nasty because we pulled back the covers and I've been, I travel a lot and I'm not a snobby travel guy, but you know, you want comfortable at least it can be beat up, but mm -hmm. blankets and pillows were like burn holes and like stains. And it was just, it was a very, very terrible hotel room. So mm -hmm. I went down to the desk and I was like, Hey, can we just get some better blankets? And she's like, we don't have any better blankets. So I went and took one, you know, a couple blankets from the room across the hallway. The door was open. So I just grabbed a couple blankets and put them on our bed that did not have burn holes in them. And mm -hmm. we came back and the lady was like, excuse me, excuse me. Um, do you take blankets? And I'm like, yeah, we took them from the other room. She's like, you're out of here. And I was like, yeah, right. And so the guy came down um, 
and he was, you're, you know, got in my face. And that's when I pulled the camera out. I said, look, I have a YouTube channel. You don't want to do this. And I did, I don't ever do that. You know, do you know who I am? But I said, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm going to make this a part of the video. If you don't stop, if you're yeah. going to really throw us out, he's like, I don't care what you do. So I was like, this is going to be great footage. This guy here, I think he's security came rushing down and he told me he's kicking me out because I stole blankets. He even called the cops. My name is get off of my Do not property, touch man. Me. I'm Do not, not going to touch, touch you. Okay. But you don't, me. if you don't leave the property, I'll believe. you're going to be in more trouble because now you're trespassing. Okay. Leave the property. Why? Why? You I'm just why. asking uh, you why. Because you're a thief. I'm a thief. Yeah. What, what did I steal? Let me say it again. He's a thief. What did I steal? Get out of here, man. I took a blanket from another room because Do the blanket that Do I was given. Get off the property. If I tell you again, you're going to have a bigger problem on your hands. I'm down. You've already been asked once. More than once. What did I do? Get off the property. What did I do? Okay. He's a thief. I'm a thief. Yeah, big thief. What is your name? What's your name? It's Jack of all trades. Keep bothering me, man. Please keep bothering me. I'm not bothering anybody. There you are. It's pricks like you that we got to deal with on a daily basis. Don't think you're not being recorded on all my cameras. I'm going to post you bigger than shit too, buddy. It was my first night in Appalachia land. And I was like, damn, this place is crazy first person I met when I got here was seriously troubled. The sheriff department showed up and they were super nice guys. They told me they have to deal with this type of stuff every night in this county. I felt bad for the sheriff deputies that showed up and I could tell they felt bad for me. One of them told me they try so hard to get folks like us to come to the county and spend money and then this happens. It just doesn't make sense, they said. <laughs> you, it's worth getting kicked out when for that kind of um so it was like this 20 minutes and we're out front and i'm filming him and he's yelling at me and he calls the police and i'm just like this is just great at this point we're already kicked out she my wife is thrilled she's like thank god right like <laughs> i don't want to be here anyway the problem is it was the only hotel in the county because the sheriff came and they were like hey man like um i'm so sorry that people like you have to deal with this because you guys seem like good folks we're out here every night for some call for crackheads or gun use or something. Mm -hmm. um, and here you are coming through town, not causing problems and they're throwing you out. He's like, don't go to the other one that in, in the County, that's worse than this one. Go about 20 minutes down the road, go to the next County. There's a holiday in. Don't hit any, any deer on your way out of town. <laughs> good luck to you. And we were like, thank God um, that we got out of there without, um, you know, our car vandalized or just, you know, anything could happen. Shot um, by Hillbilly Jim. Yeah, people just, the guy was just weird. I, yeah, you know, you know what, what the deal is with a lot of people like that, which I, I picked up being in the South, is it's, it's you're from outside. So in my opinion, he probably had like that inferior complex, right? And he didn't like you already. And this was his chance to stick it to you, you know, because... He's from this depressed area. It's weird. And I've seen it many times traveling around that they get like that. And you find that a lot in um, Kentucky, Tennessee, like Mississippi, Alabama is where I've noticed it the most. They get mm -hmm. like that. And if you're from outside, they just take this attitude like you're an a-hole and you're looking down your nose at them. You know, they pick up on it and they stick yeah. it to you when they can. You know, but sometimes, you know, we get treated a little bit. Um, if you have a bad experience, I'm like, well, you know, I, um, I'm, I'm here because this is a terrible place. So I'm going to, I'm going to say bad things about the place I'm in. Mm -hmm. So I kind of can't complain about, you know, being treated poorly. They don't know who I am. Yeah. Um, but I can't, it wouldn't be fair for me to be like, how dare you? I'm a tourist and I'm traveling. Don't treat me like that. I'm just like, you know what? Like kind of, I'm, I'm going to talk about them and they're going to talk about me. And it's just even. <laughs> it's even. I just have a bigger audience. How many weeks are you spending on the road now? So um, we're at home about, um, we're gone about a third of the year. So one month travel, two months to edit back on the road for a month. So um, yeah, we're going to be um going up to wisconsin for a month in february and then we come home then we're going to hawaii for a month in uh may and then we're going to alaska so we're going to go hit that and that'll be the last state 
Um, and then after that, you know, I, I will have kind of covered, I will have been to every state. I think there's other pockets of the country that I haven't really covered very well. Um, but I'm just going to keep burning the rubber um, because number one, you know, who knows when this will end. Yeah. Um, and I'm young and I got, you know, the motivation and, and um, the ability to, to kind of hit the road, just travel as much as I can. Um, I feel like at the end of this year, though, my U.S. kind of travel may kind of um, my road trips will probably maybe slow down. I'm either going to leave the country and go see other tell other stories. Yeah. Or um, maybe do more documentaries type stuff. I haven't decided, you know. Yeah. You, you seem to be angling and you're doing a good job at it towards more documentary stuff because we both started off just doing lists. And um, it's like right now, my thing, your, your road trips are great. Uh, you're traveling cities. I want to start doing walking tours of small towns. That's like what's mm -hmm. on my list. I want to, I got that, the DJI pocket. And that mm -hmm. one, when you're walking down the roadway, like that looks like you're floating. So that's kind of what's on tap for me next year in 2024, doing a lot of walking tours of the small towns. So um, I, I think uh, I think it's the natural evolution to do something besides keep doing these lists, you know? Yeah, man. Yeah, you should do that. You you, you just need to uh, find a place that, uh, or find places where there's just a little bit of interesting history and make some calls ahead of time so you know what you're looking for. I Something to talk about. Yeah. I love the small town thing. I think the only reason I don't do more of it is, you know, the click through rates and the interest. Yeah, it's a pretty low click through rate. It, but it can be okay. I, I was actually looking back at some of my older stuff and I was like, some of the small town stuff starting to you know, grow with, with the view counts. Um, and maybe, you know, I need to get back to doing some more small town stuff, but, um, I, I think small towns going to be more popular than it has been. I'm not going to say it's overtaking cities, but the interest I believe in the next few years, it's already starting to show because of the working from home, small towns are now an option for a lot of people. And that's what always interests me back when I started doing this and wanted to do it, it's because when I was in the army, I'd go stay someplace, you know, I'd be in like Fort Benning, Georgia. And on the weekends, I'd go out to small towns and just check them out. Of course, this yeah. is before everyone had a freaking phone on their, you know, camera on their phone. So I was taking old pictures that I'd send the film in to get, you know, developed half the time. That that was the extent of a lot of my travels in the early days. And I just love the small town. So that's what I, that's my next step is to do, start doing the small towns like that. Yeah, I think yeah, they'll yeah. be interested in it in the next couple of years. Um yeah. Yeah, but I'm the click. It's not going to be as profitable as a lot of other things I could be doing, but I think that's what I want to do still. Well, it's all though at this point, you know, you got your goal. And before we go, I want, I'm going to, I want you to hold up your gold play button if it's within reach because I have not right seen back it. there. There it is. Okay. Yep. It's back there. You want to see it? Yeah, man. It, it looks silver from way back there. You need to shine some gold uh, colored lights on it because you can't tell how gold it is from way in the back. There you oh. go. Now it's that's gold. Wait, let's get it so it's not so glossy. There you go. Yeah, man. That's it. Is it heavy? Um, yeah, it's it's a lot heavier. The silver one is only about this tall. Oh, it's even bigger than the silver. Oh one. yeah, it's tw it's like I'd say the silver one maybe comes to about here, oh, okay. about the top of that to here. I have that one downstairs. I get it for you. But the silver one's like what the size of a piece of paper, like a notebook paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's bigger than, okay. Oh, yeah. All this right. this is like, you know. Okay. I don't know what to compare this to, but it's almost like bigger than a record album, you know? Well, they wasted a lot of space on it. They could have, like, made your name bigger or. You know, I was something. thinking that it's like same a giant, thing. It's like a giant thing with, like, little teeny letters on it. Yeah, look at all that space. They could have gone out yeah. an inch and up an inch. Or put, like, a um, your number one or, like, yeah. I don't know, your face on it or something. <laughs> My my logo. They could have put my logo on there. Yeah. You know what's so funny? Because I was super obsessed with that thing. And I finally got it. And I, I just couldn't believe it for like a day. And now I get to the point where I'm just talking and I'll look in my camera. I'm all, oh, yeah, I got my gold play button. I forgot all about that. But I was hyper focused on that for probably three years. When I start seeing it could have been a potential, that's all I could think about is mm -hmm. getting that gold play button. And then I yeah. finally got it. And it's like, I achieved it. It's like, Oh, okay. Got that. Now what? You know, I know that's it's exactly what's going to happen with me. I'm getting close. I'll probably, I'll get there probably next, uh, the summertime up coming up, but probably and that's the thing is, games. you know, so like the YouTube, 
you know, the, the small town versus the ghetto versus the homeless, you know, I know what people want to see, but at a certain point, you got to do what's true to you and what, what interests you. Mm -hmm. And we found ours, we were in Texas for a month. And after like the fifth day, I'd been in Austin for a few days, San Antonio. I was like, I hate these big cities. I hate the traffic. I hate the attitude. I'm kind of tired of the bums everywhere. Like I've been there, done that. And we got through the end of the trip and I was like, you know what? I'm glad the Texas trip is over. I had a lot of fun. It, 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 I learned and I saw a lot of stuff, but I was like, you know, I don't think I really want to go to these big places anymore. As soon as I'm done doing the other two States I haven't been to, I think I want to start doing some stuff that, you know, the medium or smaller, just like you're saying small, just something else that I want to do mm -hmm. instead of chasing the YouTube algorithm BS, which doesn't matter what we do anyway. YouTube's going to yank the wheel one way or the other. It's um, going to do what it's going to do. And reward us or not for what we are trying to do our best in. So, um, yeah, uh, I think that's probably – once I get to that point, I am also focused now on getting to a million. And once I get there, I think I'm going to be like, okay, now what? I'm just going to do what I want to do anyway. Yeah. You know, I think I think the key too is, which I've opened myself up to, is I'm going to start doing sponsored videos. Um, mm -hmm. I held off and I turned down sponsored videos every week. And most of the time it's lame ones I don't want anything to do with. But I, I just tell people no all the time, all, all the time. And now I'm going to start doing it. So that will, so I'm not a slave to the algorithm anymore. And that's what I am. I mean, I live and breathe by the algorithm and where my stats are to the point where right now, like I, I've been telling you, I'm in a slump right now and I've been growing ulcers over it and I'm kind of tired of dealing with it. I'm going to start doing sponsored videos so I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah that's... do that. I thought about doing that too, but um yeah, I you're you're gonna get to a point you're either gonna burn out um or you're gonna do what you love and you know you've made you've had a lot of success. So um at this point it's all probably and in, in my opinion, I'm gonna guess it's probably just extra gravy on top of the potatoes. Yeah. Um and so do what you want to do for the last, you know, three to eight years that you're gonna keep doing this. Yep, and I got then, five uh, years, then I'm quitting. Okay, so yeah, do what you wanna do for five years and uh you know, and stop. You've, you've already got to the goal that you're trying to get to and do what you want to do for a while. And uh, you might be surprised. You might be rewarded in, in other ways that you didn't think you would be yeah. by changing it up. I mean, that's the way I look at it. Yeah. I'm getting calls for voiceover work a lot more these days. Uh, oh, yeah. oh. Nobody wants to use my voice. Yeah. yeah I don't know. It's, uh, you, I think your voice is fine. Um, I, I can't stand here myself. I, one of the, there's like five neighbor kids in here that watch and the moms are like, I, you know, I come over and they're like, oh my God, I'm so sick of hearing your voice with my kids upstairs. And I'm like, <laughs> how do you think I feel? Like I have to listen to myself all freaking day. I'm the exact opposite. I love hearing my voice. Yeah. I actually talk to myself sometimes when in here, when the mic's not on, <laughs> when I'm trying to figure stuff out, I start talking about it. Yeah. Th I've always been that way though. Um, all right. So I appreciate you doing this with me. Yeah. Hey, I, anytime. I think that, uh, you know, we have a niche and I think people like to listen to what we have to say about the country and we didn't necessarily talk about that a lot, but we did talk about it a little bit. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to talk about some other things. Uh, I had a whole bunch of questions when we got to about half of them. So maybe we'll do this again uh, a couple of weeks, maybe something like that, whenever you have time. Okay. Let's do it. All right, Nick. Thanks for being on here, man. Thanks for having me. You have a good holiday. You too. Thanks.